Okay, so I'm just going to go a bit further with the tile modeling we've been looking at and um, look at how you could create uh, a tile like this, which is uh, a bit different to the ones I've done before because you have geometry that would probably need to be modeled rather than trying to use displacement to model that. And so I'm going to uh, head over into Max and show you how easy it is. Starting with the box tool, I'm going to make a box on the ground that's kind of a sliver shape and release, bring it up and set my height. So now that I've done that, I'm going to have a look at my image again and maybe try to get a better idea uh, of the size of these things. Uh, and so visually, uh, that looks to me like it's about 15 centimetres across, maybe 20 centimetres across at most. Yeah, so they're, they're individual pieces on a, on a panel. So uh, there probably are lots of separate panels, but I'm not going to model that. I'm just going to model the, the, what we can see on the surface. So uh, individually, I'd say if they're, let's say, 20 centimetres across, maybe 15 mil deep or maybe 20 mil deep. Uh, and so I'll start with those proportions. So into max again, and I'll type in those dimensions. So the width there, I'll make 200 mil. The length, uh, I'll try 15 mil. See how that looks. And then I've got to make the height less. So I'll just do that visually and see what that looks like. Six mil, maybe that could be even less, maybe five mil. That looks pretty close actually. Okay, so this is going to form the basis of all of those and I'll just move it over a little bit. And then using the uh, modified tab now, I'm going to put in width segments but I can't really see them because I don't have edges turned on. So I'm just going to click on that shaded label and select edged faces and then I can see the edges that have been added as I add uh, width segments and I might add a few more there. There we go. And now I'm going to add a bend modifier. Right, so I'm just going to change the angle there and you can see that it's bending, but not in the correct direction. Okay, so if I change the direction though, that's not going to fix it either. To make that bend correctly, I need to then just click on the little plus next to bend, go to the gizmo, go to rotate, make sure angle snap's turned on, and then I can click and drag on that red circle, and you'll see it'll go yellow once you hover above it and then bring that around 90 degrees. There we are. And then back to bend. So I'm going to go back and look at the way that that's bending now. So it's um, what am I doing there? So it's got to go the other way. So I'm not thinking. Uh, so it's got to go Oh no, that's right, sorry uh, Back to, I just undid the, the gizmo, so I'll just add that again, so adding bend again uh, And then back to the gizmo And it's got to go this way So, so using the Y axis, not the X axis Okay, so now I'll change the, uh, the bend and you can see then it's bending in um, the uh, up-down direction. So I'm going to go around now with the y-axis. So it's two bends you need to do. There we are. And that should bend. There we are. That's bending correctly now. Okay, so I'll just repeat that. It's a bit confusing at first, but uh, the trick with bend is just to experiment if you're not sure which way the axes are going to go. Uh, so again here, the, I need to do the... Um, y-axis first, so that's the green circle. Just, again, click
flicking and dragging to rotate that 90 degrees and then the x-axis. I've got to rotate that 90 degrees after that. And that's it. So now I'll turn the uh, edges off and you'll see then I can easily change the angle and get I might even turn angle snap off and I can get that, uh, that angle pretty precisely. Um, again just looking at those images there and I might go to the uh, top view to make sure that's okay. That looks pretty good. Alright so that's it. Now I can do the copies. Uh, so I might flip this so that it's vertical. Right, so this time without going to the sub object I'm just going to select the object and then rotate again using the x-axis but I'll turn angle snap on and then I might just go to the perspective view and use the array tool and we've got here the axis a bit hard to see so I'm going to change to move just so you can see the uh, axis labels a bit more clearly so I've got Z there pointing up so if I go again back to tools and then array I'm going to change the Z uh, offset value there to uh, let's try well, let's try 15 might need to be a bit more but I'll just show you what that looks like click preview and then you can see it's arraying but I don't have a gap between those things so it looks like one big mass so I'm going to increase that Z amount make it uh, maybe 17 and maybe even a bit more so I'll try 19 so that's it that's going to give you as many of those as you like and they're instances so if you change one they'll all change. Uh, so I can increase the count there so I can have as many as I want. And so how many, I'm not going to bother counting that but uh, you can see that's fairly high. Okay, and then I can select all of those and you can use mirror or in this case probably it's just as easy to copy them across by holding shift and then dragging across and then again making sure it's on instance click OK and then I can rotate them 180 degrees There we are. So they can be all still adjusted because they're instances. If I decide that I want a different angle, I can still experiment with that. So then I can use Array again now to get copies in the other direction. So it will go again just to maybe this time to the front viewport. Oops, I want to maximize, there we are. And then go to Tools and then Array. And this time put in a, uh, an X value. So I've got Z there still on 19, I'm going to put that back to 0. And then I'll make X higher. And a really useful option when you, whenever you use the array tool is to turn on preview so that you can see the effect of your um, the parameters that you've put into the array. Now I probably don't need so many, I've got 78, that's, oops, let's just undo that, I must have clicked. So 
So again, we'll just select those. Oops. Okay, it's just been playing up a bit, so I'll just do that again. There we are. So I'm going to reduce the count there to maybe 20. If I preview this time, again, make Z0 and then X. Let's try 400. So maybe we'll try reducing that a little bit to 390. And that'll bring me a bit closer. Pretty good. Done. So they're all still instances, so if I change one, they will all change. And so then probably to render that you'd want a um, plane so I'm just going to select a uh, or create a plane in the front view just as a backing and then I'm going to select all of those objects that I've just made making sure I get all of them without the plane and then to make them sit on the surface of the plane I'm going to use the align tool and pick my plane there we are. and then turn off Z and X uh, and make target object uh, anything really, minimum, center, maximum doesn't matter because it's flat. Uh, and then the current object, uh, it'll be uh, maximum. Should be maximum. Oh, did I not select some? Uh, maybe that's just showing strangely, so I'm going to click OK. Oh no, it's just showing strangely, so that's right, so that's sitting exactly on the surface. That's it, so uh, probably it doesn't hurt to have a uh, floor surface as well. So for that you could just copy the, uh, the plane using Rotate. I'm going to hold down Shift and then rotate my plane to create a new one. So that will be the floor. <coughs> and so, like I've been doing with these other exercises, uh, now I'll put in the materials just to show you how you can get some useful uh, output from this. So with the material presets, it's really quick and easy. Uh, I'm just going to go and select a, uh, a slot that's not being used. It's on Arc and Design, so I can simply go to uh, Ceramic in the list there. So I've got glazed ceramic tiles I'll use this time, maybe just something different. Put those onto the floor. To see them, you can click on that button there to show the map in the viewport. And I'm just going to show it in a different viewport so that you can see the material. There it's you can see uh, a sign, but it's very small. So I'm just going to check the mapping for that plane. So on the plane, it's OK. So in the material, I'm just going to go into the map there, turn on that option, real world map size. And I know this one will have uh, four tiles per, per tile, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to make my tiles, I'll make them nice big ones. So let's say 450. 
So four times four fifty is uh, eighteen hundred. There we are, and I'll check my other maps. Yep, they're all okay. All right, so I can see that tile now really clearly in the uh, in the view there. The uh, the wall surface that I've made, I might just use the glazed ceramic material and make it maybe a bit lighter and a little bit less shiny, a bit less reflective, maybe a bit less glossy too, so more of a matte tile or matte ceramic. And then my modelled tiles, I'll make a really matte ceramic. So I'm just going to select another empty slot, go to glaze ceramic, and bring the reflectivity right down and the glossiness as well. Like that. Actually, maybe it could be a bit glossy, this one, but not very reflective. And it'll be nice if that's a nice off white. There we are. So even now, I could do a quick render. but it's all a bit flat looking. So I'm going to put in a light just to make that have a bit more depth. So put target light in. Get the lighting set to scene lights uh, I'm going to use control C to create a camera view from my um, viewport which is a, that's a really useful shortcut bring my target a bit closer and then render again Okay, so the light's a bit too close to the surface. I'm just going to bring that back. And actually, I'm also going to go into my lighting templates and just choose a template from there. Uh, so let's go for a um, pendant fluorescent. Ah, wrong view. Okay. Oh, why is it when doing there? That's better. Okay, so maybe to get the same sort of effect as you have in that um, example, the camera could be moved right up close to the wall, which could give you a nice effect, and maybe try and keep it vertical, or sorry, uh, with a horizontal plane. There we go. So, not too many steps, and you can create any geometry you like that way. So that's just a box, and uh, well, a box in two planes.
and you can then be as creative as you like. You can come up with lots of different geometry that way. Uh, just using very simple uh, primitives as a starting point. And so in this case, just that one bend modifier. So a box with a bend. And by setting it up in that way, I can then experiment and maybe try something different to what we had originally. So this is going to give more of a joined effect. So it'll give them like a wavy pattern. Okay, so anyway, I thought I'd give you some ideas and uh, maybe just get you thinking about when it's worth modelling something rather than trying to do it all with that displacement method because displacement will only get you so far uh, and it's really only useful in some situations anyway. Okay, and so then, as well as the geometry, of course, you've got the opportunity then to experiment with materials. And uh, you know, imagine if you had to do this in Photoshop, picking out each of these surfaces, and it would just take forever. And a lot of people think that you have to do it in Photoshop because that is um, you know, the popular approach for a lot of people at the moment. But those people spend a huge amount of time, <laughs> I think too much time, uh, sometimes uh, doing the work in Photoshop because uh, often they have fairly simple geometry to work with as well. And it really just isn't practical when you have more complex geometry like this. But it's so easy to change the material here. You can see just by going in and setting a different colour, then they can re-render. And there's nothing to stop you taking this into Photoshop afterwards and, and doing a lot more. I guess that's probably too yellow. But again, it's easy to go back and desaturate it a bit. That's that's a good colour. I think. Okay, a bit of entourage doesn't hurt. So a person. Do you remember the method I showed you earlier to get cutouts? Oh no, sorry, that was the other class. Uh, Maybe I will just show you that since this was such a quick, easy thing. Uh, I'll put in a plane. So I'm just going to go to my uh, left view. So I can see there's my... Oops. oops there's my floor surface on the ground. A bit hard to see there, but it is there. And my other objects... I'm going to select everything there and move it all up so that the floor is in line with the, uh, with the X, um, also with the home grid. It's a little thing, but it just makes life a bit easier. And then I'll make another plane. with no segments, or oh, sorry, one segment in each direction. And make sure I can see that plane in my camera view. And we're gonna make the plane the size of a person, so uh, what's the average height of a person in your drawings? What do you normally use? What, what height do you normally make your people? Yeah, one eight's a tallish person. Well, I'm, I'm that, that's my height, which is... Yeah, so if you're that tall, that's fine. I usually make them a little bit less, because average height is probably yeah. a little bit less than that, maybe 1,700 or 1,750, something like that. And then you can adjust the width once you get the actual 
person that you're going to use in there. So I might just get my camera to come out a little bit so that I can now see that plane. So there's my plane. And I can go back to the camera and bring that field of view down a bit more so that I can see uh, also bring it out a bit more so my focal length is lower that's probably too far something like that yeah okay so uh, I think my plane's back to front so I'll just rotate it 180 degrees there we go and then back to the material editor get another slot this time I'm just going to add a diffuse uh, map so I'm just using a bitmap and I'll get some images that I've got for you on the P drive in the material images folder So I've got some cutout people here. They're not the best, but at least something. So there are only a couple there. I've got better ones in the, um, I think there's a people folder. Where's the people folder? Here we are, people. But most of those, I don't have the diffuse maps to go with them. I mean, they're cutout maps, the um, opacity. Uh, I've got some though. This, unfortunately, not, not the good ones. Uh, I'm going to show you later how easy it is to make opacity maps, so we'll definitely do that afterwards. But for now, I'll just use this one, the, the schoolgirls. It's not the best, but they'll do. And so I'm going to turn this option off. Real world map scale, and the same in the plane. Real world map size. Assign, and then make sure we can see the... Uh, the image, maybe that there would be not that tall. And just gonna play with that width. And then the position. Uh, so maybe my camera needs to come down a little bit. So it's looking from lower, that would look better too. Okay, so I'm just fine tuning that position. Again, we could get a better cutout than that, but I think that'll do for now. And then the cutout can have this corresponding cutout map or opacity map. So again, once we turn that option off, you'll see then, just go and turn that on the viewport, they're cut out using that. So I think actually the um, the tiles there might be a little bit small, and I could, that's, that's another huge advantage you have with Max that you don't have with Revit, uh, the ability to scale things freely. So I can just select these things. I've made them all a bit small, so I'm going to select everything there that's part of my wall, and then using the scale tool I can just scale it all up. In Revit, this is virtually impossible because it doesn't want you to work this way, but never in Max, it's always an option. And you can scale things non-uniformly, so have you ever tried to make something maybe higher but not wider or longer? So you just want to stretch it up, make it taller, but not make it, you know, bigger in all directions? You know, that's something you might find you need to do quite often when you're designing different things. And, uh, and again, that's something you can easily do in Max. So I'll maybe give you some examples of that later, but for now, it's going to make this plane for the floor uh, big enough. And so there, the advantage of doing the people in the 3D space is that you'll get reflections and shadows from them projected onto the, uh, onto the surface. And, oh no, they've gone transparent. Okay, I've got to show you what's happening there. So that's because 
in my cutout. What have I done? I know that's okay. That should be cut out there just a bit see through, so I must have put in a transparency somewhere. No, that's okay. Somehow it's got a uh, transparency on those which shouldn't be there. I don't know why that is. I'll just do a standard material. So that's the Arc and Design material, which is great for most things, but for something simple like this, the standard material is often easier. So with that, I can uh, just transfer the maps across, and it's good to know this actually as well. So I can just copy by right clicking on the map, and then go to my new material, and right click on the um, slot I want it on there. And then the same with that uh, cutout map. Again, right click, copy, go to my new material. And this one goes on opacity, so right click and paste. And then I will just assign that instead. And make sure that's right. Yep, that should be okay. This will tell me if it's the image or the material. Yeah, so it's the material. Don't know what's happening there, but anyhow, that's working fine now. So. Uh, the only problem is that girl in the background is uh, floating a little bit because obviously that's the way the image is um, and uh, you can obviously change that. But uh, you know you can see then once you get the um, you know, reflections generated automatically, shadows, things like that as well, it can make life a bit easier. And uh, yeah, again though the main thing is looking at the ways you can get different patterns from fairly simple geometry and again just thinking about the different um, modifiers you can use to get the changes you want.